NVIDIA's next generation RTX 5000 series GPUs are here, and they come with a ton of wild new tech, like DLSS 4, up to four times frame generation, Reflex 2, and more. Luckily, NVIDIA sent over one of their newest cards, and a thanks for that. So after testing it for a while, I thought I'd go over the first four things you need to do with your new build. And if you haven't picked one up, I'll have affiliate links down in the description below for when they're released. It doesn't cost you anything more, and it helps the channel out. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. So first things first, if you're upgrading a current build, especially if you're coming from an AMD GPU, you want to delete your old drivers before installing the new ones. And while you can go in and just do a typical uninstall, I suggest using a free software called DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller. The reason this is important is because it actually removes every trace of your driver, so it's about as close to a fresh install as you can get. Simply put, really weird things can happen if you don't fully remove your old driver, from crashes to just wonky stability issues. Honestly, even if you remove it, there's a chance you'll still have problems, but DDU definitely gives you your best shot at a nice install. To use it, just install the software and then reboot into safe mode, then open it and pick what you want to clean. After it's done, you should be good to install your new NVIDIA driver. The next thing you want to do with your new RTX 5000 card is actually a couple things that NVIDIA themselves suggest in their reviewer's guide. The first one being to turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Now, some of you may not think it's a big deal given it doesn't give all that much performance, but NVIDIA specifically says that it's to ensure a smooth experience with DLSS 3 and DLSS 4. So it sounds like it's more than just FPS. As for what it does, most everyone knows that the CPU and GPU CPU are made to process different types of data. Well, the CPU is more of a general purpose processor, while the GPU is made specifically to handle graphics, as well as matrix operations in the case of NVIDIA's Tensor Cores, but you get the point. Different tasks are better handled by certain processors, and the goal is to minimize the amount of times a processor is waiting for something to finish. So with that in mind, scheduling the task properly is obviously important, and traditionally the CPU scheduled the GPU's tasks but this can lead to delays and it can hog the CPU's resources. So turning on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling offloads this to a processor on the GPU itself. Now, you might think it's only good for those with slower CPUs, but NVIDIA suggests turning it on even with the assumption that we're using a Ryzen 9800X3D. So I definitely think everyone should. To do that, you just head into System, Display, Graphics, Advanced Graphics Settings, and turn it on. The next setting you want to ensure is turned on is Resizable Bar. You likely already know what it is, but it essentially allows your CPU to access all of your GPU's VRAM, and it can give you a boost in frames. To turn this on, you want to head into your BIOS and turn on Resizable Bar, usually in your PCI Express settings. To verify it's turned on, you can head into the new NVIDIA app, go to System, My Rig, then View Rig Details. Here, you can check to see if it's turned on or not. DLSS 4 is kind of a big deal for NVIDIA's new 5000 series GPUs. It's similar to the 4000 series with DLSS 3. When NVIDIA originally announced those cards, their performance seemed off the charts. Unfortunately, a lot of that performance came from the new tech in DLSS 3 frame generation, meaning those wild claims were from AI generating an extra frame, not the processor being that much faster at rendering. And don't get me wrong, frame generation can be really helpful to those wanting to get more frames, but it obviously isn't perfect, comes with its downsides, like the fact that the game has to add support for it. And that's what we're going through yet again. A lot of the performance claims NVIDIA made at the announcement were clearly thanks to DLSS 4 and its new frame generation, which lets you get up to three generated frames for every rendered frame. During all of the announcements, NVIDIA mentioned that DLSS 4 will come with day zero support for 75 games, and that is pretty impressive for a launch like this, but unfortunately that isn't all native support. Instead, NVIDIA is releasing something called DLSS Override within the NVIDIA app. So you definitely want to make sure your drivers are up to date because what it does is essentially take games with older DLSS versions and add support for things like multi-frame generation. 
Now, that doesn't mean that you can take a game that has the original DLSS and add frame generation to it. From what I understand, it has to have support for regular frame generation to now use multi-frame generation. But still, it's a nice feature because it expands support for many more games. To use it, you have to go into the NVIDIA app and select each individual game. Go down to the bottom and under DLSS Override Frame Generation, select if you want 3 or 4x frames. You can also override the model preset to their new Transformer model for better upscaling. Right now, there's only a few titles for the press, but according to NVIDIA, there will be 75 at release. And finally, is to try your hand at overclocking. Of course, I take zero responsibility if you damage your GPU in any way. If you're interested though, there's a couple ways to go about it. The easiest way is to use the automatic tuning in the NVIDIA app. Simply head to the System tab and click Performance. From here, you turn on Automatic Tuning. Then the app goes through a scanning process to run some tests to determine the overclock. Usually, it's not going to give you a ton of performance, but it's a quick and easy way to get a little boost. The second option is to manually overclock your card. I personally suggest using MSI Afterburner, but you can use whatever tool you prefer. Either way, you want to up the power limit, then try to boost the clocks a little at a time, testing the overclock in stressful laps. I personally suggest using 3 Mark's Time Spy because it will crash where many other benchmarks won't. Once you start having issues, dial back the settings a bit until your system is fully stable through multiple tests, and you should have a faster GPU for it. So while that does it for today, let me know what tip you suggest for the new 5000 series cards down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And as always, have a great day.